All right, in this video, we are going to simplify expressions with rational exponents, such as this one down here. Um, some good prior knowledge that we need to have before we go into this is, is basically what these rational exponents mean. And so um, let's start by going back and forth between radical form and exponential form. Um, if I have a rational exponent, and my base is 4 in this example, this numerator of the rational exponent is going to stay with my base, and the denominator becomes the index uh, of that radical. So that means I would take 4, multiply it by itself 4 times, and then take the cube root of whatever that value is. And then we can go the other way. If I give you the radical form, we should be able to take that and convert it into exponential form. So if I have 2, let's see, the numerator of that fraction would be the exponent right there, and the denominator would be my index. So this is the same thing as that right there. And so we basically need to understand that if I have x to the a over b, that's the same thing as x to the a under a radical with b for the index. And I can also rewrite it as this. I can um, use the index there and raise that whole thing to the a power. These two are interchangeable. And so that's what we need to know going into this lesson. And so let's just start with an example. We're going to simplify some expressions uh, knowing what we know about these um, rational exponents. And so for this first example, it looks like I've got the entire base of xy and then I've got an index of 3 and a power of 9. Well, what we learned is that that power is in the numerator, the index is in my denominator, and I can keep simplifying. 9 over 3 is just 3. And then if we know our exponent properties, we know this is the same thing as x cubed, y cubed. When I have an entire term raised to a power, that exponent will apply to everything in that term. Let's go on to the second example. Um, this one we can just take step by step. Um, I can simplify this first. It's not the distributive property, but it kind of looks like it. Basically, this exponent will apply to all the values there. And so if I start here, x squared, I can highlight that x squared right there, raised to the second power, that's going to become x to the fourth, and then y squared, because that exponent will also apply to the y. And then this value over here, we have to simplify it. That's going to become y. Um, the exponent is the numerator of our fraction, and the index is the denominator. Well, we can simplify this once again. I have x to the fourth. I still have my y squared. But now I have a y to the first because 4 over 4 is just a 1. And then if I know my basic exponent properties, I know that those will add on those exponents. So we also, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but we need to have an understanding of basic exponent properties here too. So this expression is the same as that right there, and this expression is the same as that right there. Let's move on. So here I've got some for you to practice. What you might want to do is you might want to pause the video and try these on your own, um, and then play the video to check your work. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you're kind of wondering what to do with these, anytime you got radical form, it helps to put them in uh, exponent form. So I know that it's like there's a little exponent of 1 on these. And so for this first value, that's going to become x to the 1 fifth because the exponent becomes our numerator and the index becomes our denominator. And for the second one, there's no index right here. There's not a number shown, but we know that if there's not one shown, that's just a square root, which really just means the index is 2, okay? And then here, um, if I want to simplify these, we know that when I'm multiplying two numbers with the same base, we would add the exponents. And then this just gets into an issue with adding fractions, and I'm not going to go into how to add fractions or how to get to the common denominator, but this basically, if I did get the common denominator would be 2 tenths plus 5 tenths because 1 fifth becomes that and 1 half becomes that. 
and then we add those exponents to get x to the 7 tenths. If I wanted to then, you don't have to, but if I wanted to then take it back into radical form, it'd be x to the 7th with an index of 10. So we know that that was a lot of steps, but we know that this over here is the same thing as that. And I'm not sure if I made that 10 clear. Let me fix that index of 10. Let's do our next one. Um, in this one, I've got an exponent of 1 sixth. Um, and first, we can simplify this before we put it in radical form. I know that you might be seeing that and thinking, oh, you know, we've got that fractional exponent. We need to put it in radical form. But let's start by uh, simplifying this overall expression. Um, I know that when I raise an entire term to a power, we know that that exponent is going to apply to everything in the parentheses. So it will apply to the 64 and it will apply to the x to the 12th. So this is going to become 64 to the 1 6th power times, now whenever I raise a power to another power, we're raising the 12 to the 1 6th power. What we do in that case, if you know your exponent properties, is that we multiply exponents. Um, so 12 times 1 6th is going to be 2. Because um, basically 12 divided by 6 is 2. And then we can simplify this a little bit further. Um, I can rewrite 64 in radical form. And now we just have to be thinking to ourselves, what is the sixth root of 64? What number times itself six times gives us 64? Um, and so basically, I mean, another way you could look at it is you could say, can I rewrite this number as some power of 6? And if, if you know, you know, um, kind of your basics, if you've done enough of these problems, you would realize in this case that it's, that it's a 2. That 2 times itself 6 times would give me a 64. Therefore, the 6th root of 64 is 2. And then I still have my x squared. So um, once again, this expression over here on the far left is the same is that right there. Let's do another one. Now you can see that these next two examples are very similar to number two, uh, but let's keep going. First, my two-thirds exponent is going to apply to both the eight and the x to the ninth. So I have eight to the two-thirds times x to the, well, when I'm raising a power to a power, once again, here I'm going to multiply the exponents. So when I multiply nine times two-thirds, that's going to give me 18 thirds. And then, of course, I can simplify that because 18 divided by 3 is just 6. Now let's simplify a little bit further. It looks like um, I've got a value with that rational exponent, so let's rewrite it. Um, I've got 8 squared in the cube root of that times x to the 6th. And if I were to simplify this, I can take some number and square it, and then cube root that. This one's actually going to be a little bit easier if I take the cube root first and then square it. I don't know if you remember. I'll, I'll write this in, in black right here. But if you have, um, I think I used a and b on the last exponent. If I have this, it's the same thing as this. Those are interchangeable. I mentioned that a few slides ago. So here, I could rewrite this as the cube root of 8 squared times x to the 6. And now, for me, it's a little bit easier to evaluate this in my head because I know the cube root of 8 is 2. So that becomes 2 in the parentheses, and 2 squared is just 4. So there's our answer in that case. Once again showing that it's the same as that up there. And now let's keep going. One last problem, and then we're done. So in this case, um, I know that this exponent of 0.5 will apply to both the 9 and the r to the 4th. So it becomes r, or excuse me, 9 to the 0.5 times r, and when raising a power to a power, once again, I multiply exponents. That's going to be r squared, because half of 4 is 2. Now, that 0.5 exponent, we're used to seeing those as fractions. So if I rewrite it like this, it might, 
lend a little insight into what to do next. That exponent of one half, as we've discussed, is going to be the same thing as a square root or a nine to the first power and an index of two, but with a one and a two, we don't normally put those numbers there. And then I can simplify square root of nine to get three r squared. Okay. So in this video, we've done a lot of practice problems. We looked at a lot of examples where we're simplifying these expressions using exponent properties, using our definitions of rational exponents. And I know it seems tedious and it might seem kind of uh, worthless, but this is a skill that is going to be very useful as you get older and you start looking into calculus and things like that. It's important to be able to, to be fluent with these exponent properties and, um, and how they apply in different scenarios. So there you go.